What are those? What's this? What do I do with that? What is all of this? Hey, if you're lost on understanding Photoshop, you are not alone, but fortunately, you have me. Hey, what's up y'all? Welcome back to The Art Mentor. My name is Sean, I'm a veteran art teacher and freelance artist, and today I'm gonna give you a basic tutorial of the UI and overall interface of Photoshop so that you can use it to create awesome digital art, and it's gonna start right now. All right, so now let's go ahead and start up Photoshop. You're gonna be greeted by the welcome screen. So when you get this bad boy loaded up, what you're gonna see here is the overall home screen for you. Down at the bottom, you're gonna see a lot of recent documents. So that's a quick and easy way for you to just go ahead and jump right back into something that you did recently or semi-recently. However, if you're just starting out, you need to create something new. So over here on the left-hand side, you're gonna see the create new button that you can press. If you're not seeing this for any reason, which sometimes Photoshop does do this for whatever silly reason, you go to File and New, or if you just wanna do the keyboard shortcut, it is Control N. So when you hit the Create New, a couple things to pay attention to is first off, it's gonna give you a list, again, of your most recently created document sizes up on there, and it also some pre-generated ones that are quite popular as well. But uh, I just wanna walk you through what you should do in my personal recommendations. Over here on the right, you can create your own unique custom size. So you can select from pixels, inches, centimeters, millimeters, points, and picas right there. I like to generally work in pixels, and so do most digital artists like to work in pixels. You're gonna see three main values that we need to plug in here. We're gonna see the width, the height, and the resolution. Resolution, just so you're understanding this correctly, that determines how many pixels within a square inch of your screen. If you're gonna be only creating stuff that's gonna be seen only on a screen and not printed, you can only view things at a maximum of 72 pixels per inch. So if you're gonna blast everything at 300 pixels per inch, it's just gonna cause a lot of stress in your computer, a lot of lag on your computer, and your file size is going to be enormous compared to just a 72 pixels per inch resolution. One last thing you wanna make sure that you do is on the color mode down here, you have several options for this. Make sure that's on either RGB color, CMYK or lab color, depending on what you wanna use it for. For me, I'm gonna be showing you this in RGB color because that's pretty much the standard for Photoshop. And again, you also have the ability to select how many bits, just select eight bit for now. And when you're all done with all those options and you've created your perfect size canvas, go ahead and hit create. Now, let me just explain everything you're seeing right now because if you're brand new to this or any digital painting program especially, this is very overwhelming. You don't know what the heck y'all are looking at. So the central part of your screen that you're actually gonna be producing art on, this is called your canvas area. Flanking your canvas areas on both the right and the left side, these are what are called your palettes. And they're your basic windows for where you're gonna get tools and where you're gonna be accessing various functions. So over here on the left side, this is gonna be your tools palette. Now, the typical overall flow and layout that you see here, this is called your workspace. All right, so you can customize this however you would like to. For example, I can go ahead, I can drag this palette for the adjustments palette out into the center of the screen if I want. Uh, sometimes people like to go ahead and do this for other things like for their color palette and you can go ahead and put them here. You can reorganize them however you'd like to by sliding them back and forth. You can also go ahead and just double click them. If you wanna see more or less, you wanna expand, contract them as well. If you wanna overall hide pretty much everything so that you just have your canvas area on screen anytime, you wanna hit the tab button and that will go ahead and hide everything so you only see the toolbar at the top. And if you really, really like a workspace, what you can do is you can save it. You go over here to window and up on workspace, and here you can see that there are some defaults for you, Essentials 3D, graphic and web motion, painting, photography. You can also reset if you were moving a bunch of stuff around, you don't like it anymore, or you can save it exactly how you like it by going here and hitting new workspace. You can title it and that way Photoshop will save it exactly how you like it just in case. And as we go through this tutorial today, I'm gonna call out some of the most important palettes and features on this as we go like this bad boy right here. So I wanna key you into the most important palette on here, which is the layers palette located in the bottom right. Let me break this down, show you the structure of this. Is that every little piece of your entire image is composed and contained within a separate layer. Now, to see each part of it, 
here's all you need to know and what you need to do. So you're gonna see a little eye icon next to each layer. And you'll see that I also name my layers. This is a good practice I have adopted and many other digital artists do so that you don't get confused as far as what the heck you're looking at. You can go ahead and click that little eye and you can see how that's hiding and making things visible. This is called visibility in Photoshop. So you can do this in multiples by either clicking multiples at a time, or you can also click on one and drag up. You can see just as I start this, I'm gonna go ahead and show and hide literally everything step by step right now as far as what did I do and how did I go ahead and create this image right here just as I kind of turn off each one. Oh God, now we're getting real, oh my God, what happened here? Woo, that's scary looking, right? So you can kind of see as I'm turning this off and on all these different pieces. And this is really all the power of Photoshop is that you can deconstruct your image so that everything is infinitely amendable. And this is a huge advantage to y'all who are coming from the background of traditional media, where if you mess up an eye, like you gotta redo that whole part of that face. But no, in Photoshop, my friends, that's not your concern. You can go ahead and you can always go back to things. A couple other functions that are really key for you to know about the layers in Photoshop. You can duplicate layers. So to duplicate a layer, you got a few different ways you can do this. Number one is you can right click and you can hit duplicate layer right here. If you have multiple documents open, you can duplicate from one document into another, which is a really awesome function. I would have this untitled one, I don't wanna do that. But yes, I can do that and it will go ahead and it will generate this copy layer, which is great. The quicker shortcut version of this is to just hit Control J and that will automatically create that. Now, if you wanna create a new layer, you go down uh, to the lower right and you're gonna see a little square with the plus icon right here and that is the create new layer icon. And that will generate just a new layer. It'll just title it. If you wanna title your own layers, like I recommend, just double click into that and it'll allow you to do that. And if you wanna delete a layer, right in the bottom right again, that's where you're gonna see the delete icon. You can also just hit the delete button on your keyboard as well. Next to each of the layers, you're gonna see what's called the thumbnail image. And you can increase or decrease the size of this. If you right click on any of your layer thumbnails, which is getting a little image right there. Another piece of advice I have for you for managing your layers overall, aside from naming them, is that you can go ahead and you can also colorize them. I tend to do this a lot for my special effects and things that I need to keep track of. You can right click on them and you can select a color. So right now these are on green, but I can change them to things like orange or red. And I typically do this, especially for multi-character artworks or for big illustrations where my layer hierarchy is a little bit more complex than this. Now let's get into what tools you need to use in order to start digitally painting today. Hey, be sure to watch part two of this along with these videos right here.